Are you still struggling with SCR systems? Would you like to know how to fix them more effectively? Well, this video will do that and help you get over those AdBlue problems. This video will explain how and why AdBlue low efficiency fault codes occur and how to stop them from returning. Let's get started. Customers can often become frustrated when things don't go right. And with SCR systems, there are sure to be times when things go wrong. As a fault finder, you may have seen this type of fault before. But what if you're new to automotive fault finding? You may not be fully experienced in dealing with SCR. So I'm going to break down a typical fault that plagues many an AdBlue system. AdBlue efficiency too low. Let's take a look at how an SCR system functions using the example of a BMW F11 with the N47 engine. SCR stands for Selective Catalytic Reduction, and its function is to reduce NOx particles to as close to zero as possible. You may be wondering, what is NOx? Well, NOx is short for nitrogen oxides, harmful particles produced during combustion, contributing to smog and adverse environmental and health effects. So, SCR was developed to reduce NOx. The SCR system utilizes a liquid additive known as AdBlue. AdBlue contains high purity urea at 32.5% and deionized water at 67.5%. Contrary to what you might hear in your local pub or from so called bro science, urea is not made from cow's urine. Rather, it is synthesized industrially. The process involves reacting ammonia with carbon dioxide under high temperature and pressure to form urea. The synthetic urea is then purified and dissolved in the ionized water to produce AdBlue. Now that you know a little bit more about what AdBlue is in its chemical form, it's time to introduce the components of the SCR system on our BMW F11 example. First off, we have the electronic components, the SCR control unit, the active tank unit, the engine control unit, or DDE, and the SCR metering valve. Between the metering valve and the active tank is a heated feed pipe that transfers pressurized AdBlue from the active tank to the metering valve, where it is injected in a triple spray pattern into the exhaust pipe towards the diffuser. The sensor lineup is straightforward. There are two NOx sensors, one before the SCR catalyzer and one after it. Finally, an exhaust temperature sensor is housed just before the SCR catalyzer. Let's explore each component in turn and see what they do within the SCR system. The SCR control unit is a partner on the PT CAN, from which it receives messages from the DDE, such as the calculation of the injection rate of AdBlue, and the SCR control unit's role is to ensure that the input parameters for metering via the DDE are within the permitted range. The other main functions of the SCR unit are summarized briefly in the points shown here, though it is helpful to think of the SCR unit as the commander in charge of the activation of the SCR system. However, the DDE is the big boss of the entire emission system and can deactivate the SCR control unit if needed. The DDE in the context of SCR performs the following functions. It evaluates the nitrogen oxide sensors. The DDE also is responsible for calculating the AdBlue injection rate. The calculation is transmitted to the SCR control unit on the powertrain CAN bus. As mentioned, the DDE is dominant within the SCR system and can deactivate it if needed. The active tank is the reservoir that stores the AdBlue. Built into the tank is the delivery module. The delivery module houses the pump that pressurizes the line to the metering valve, and it also sucks back unused AdBlue when the engine is off to prevent line freezing in cold ambient conditions. The delivery module houses a heater and the AdBlue level sensor. The fluid level is measured by ultrasound. The evaluation electronics transmit ultrasonic pulses. These ultrasonic pulses are reflected at the transition from AdBlue to air echo impulse. The evaluation electronics receive and amplify these echo impulses. The amplified echo pulses are then converted into a digital signal. The final part of the delivery module are the evaluation electronics. 
The SCR metering module is mounted upstream of the SCR catalytic converter within the exhaust system and is operated by the SCR control unit. Commands, including the determined amount of AdBlue and authorization for release, are relayed from the Digital Diesel Electronics DDE, to the SCR control unit through the powertrain CAN. The metering of AdBlue varies based on factors such as the load, flow rate, and exhaust gas temperature, and the respective temperature and load profiles. The SCR metering module includes an injector and a cooling system with the cooling function serving to minimize the transfer of exhaust gas heat to the injector. The injector is a two-wire solenoid that operates via a clocked signal from the SCR module. The feed pipe is used to transport the pre-charged AdBlue from the active tank to the metering valve. When the vehicle is switched off, the residual AdBlue within the feed pipe is sucked back into the active tank. This prevents the contents of AdBlue freezing in cold, ambient temperatures. The heater element is a simple two-wire element that can be checked with an ohm meter should it fail internally. The Digital Diesel Electronics DDE system communicates the required volume of AdBlue and its release to the SCR control unit via the powertrain CAN. The metering of AdBlue is determined by factors such as load, flow rate and exhaust gas temperature, temperature profile, and load profile. The DDE must ensure that the exhaust gas temperature is sufficiently high and, if necessary, take measures to increase it. The effectiveness of NOx conversion is contingent upon the temperature within the SCR catalytic converter. Temperature sensing is achieved using a temperature-dependent resistor. This circuit features a voltage divider, enabling resistance measurement based on temperature. The resistance value is converted to temperature using a specific characteristic line for the temperature sensor. The sensor employs an NTC, negative temperature coefficient, resistor, whose resistance decreases as the temperature rises. This resistance varies from 96 kilo ohms to 32 ohms, corresponding to a temperature range of minus 40 degrees C to 800 degrees C. The nitrogen oxide sensor, NOx sensor, measures nitrogen oxide levels in exhaust from petrol and diesel engines, signaling when the catalyst storage is full. Positioned downstream from the catalyst, it alerts the engine control system when nitrogen oxide levels are too high. The system then initiates a regeneration process, temporarily enriching the air-fuel mixture to convert the stored nitrogen oxide back to nitrogen, typically every 60 seconds. The NOx sensor uses a ceramic solid electrolyte of zirconium dioxide to conduct oxygen ions at temperatures above 300 degrees Celsius, maintained by a heating element. The sensor contains two chambers. The first adjusts oxygen concentration using a pump cell that directs ions through the electrolyte. Nitrogen oxide then moves to the second chamber, where it's further reduced by another pump cell. A catalytic element in the third pump cell converts the remaining nitrogen oxide into nitrogen and oxygen, creating a current proportional to the nitrogen oxide levels. Additionally, the rear NOx sensor is used to check the efficiency of the AdBlue system by comparing its readings with those from the front NOx sensor. This sensor communicates with the engine's Digital Diesel Electronics DDE, via a local operating network LOCAN, allowing for real-time monitoring and adjustments based on exhaust emissions data. Underneath the car, we can better see the components and start to examine why our F11 has a recurring low-efficiency fault code. The rear right corner houses the SCR system tank and associated components shown here. At the front right side of the car, after the diesel particulate filter and the oxidizing catalyzer, you will find the front NOx sensor. Close behind it is the metering module with the built-in injector. The easiest thing to do first off is to take a measurement of the actual AdBlue strength using a refractometer. On this car, the mixture was perfect at around 32.5%. Next is to perform a visual external check of the components. These systems can often leak here at the pipe on the active tank or here at the metering valve. On our case study vehicle, 
It had recently had a new feed line, and as a result, it had no external leaks. External leaks are obvious and display large amounts of crystallized deposits. In such cases, this can reduce the AdBlue efficiency, but not be so severe as to trigger a low-line pressure fault code. What about the metering valve injector? Let's look at the injector on this vehicle. This crystallization is quite normal. What you want to look out for is bulging in the body of the injector, seen here, or if the spray pattern is off. Restrictions in the mixing tube here are quite normal and can be removed with water. A spray pattern test can be initiated with the tester as well as a delivery volume test that can measure how much Ad Blue is dispensed in a given time period. But what if all of these tests are checking out? This leaves us with the NOx sensors and the SCR catalyzer. Let's warm up our NOx sensors and observe the values. Remember that until the NOx sensor probes reach operating temperature, they will remain offline, highlighted here as red horizontal bars. When the bars turn to a green color and the temperature in the exhaust system rises to a sufficient amount, the sensors will come online and start to display NOx values. With both NOx sensors online, let's take a look at the NOx concentration. NOx concentration refers to how many parts per million of exhaust gas contains NOx, which is abbreviated as PPM. It goes without saying that the rear NOx values can never be higher than the front NOx values since the pre-cat NOx is untreated and has not yet passed through the SCR catalyzer. In this scenario, we can clearly see that the rear sensor is reading more NOx than the front sensor. But why? Many fault finders can overlook this subtle value since the add blue efficiency fault code can be caused by all of the faults covered in this video. Mostly, all of the faults will result in the same fault code, and since the tester does not guide well enough, I am here to tell you that sensors occasionally malfunction, yet they fail to inform the fault finder that perhaps there are implausible values. So, how do we test our, what seems to be, faulty rear knock sensor? Simple, we remove it and swap positions with the front knock sensor. Another warm-up cycle needs to be run, and if the front sensor starts to display higher values than the rear sensor, then bingo! We have found the fault. It seems Hank has lost his voice, no doubt due to chain smoking 50 unfiltered cigarettes a day, so I will be stepping in to finish off the SCR training video. You can clearly see that the values have changed because the dodgy or faulty rear sensor is now displaying as the front and vice versa. So we can say that there is no SCR catalyzer fault since the rear is now reading much lower NOx values because the sensor was goosed. The front NOx will be higher than the rear in a functioning fault-free system, but will it be this high? Let's go ahead and refit the front NOx back where it belongs and fetch a new rear NOx sensor from the parts department. Okay, so our diagnostics expert Ben Johnson is just finishing off fitting a new rear NOx sensor. Ben will erase the adaption values and also refit the front NOx sensor in its original place. Now let's take another look at those NOx sensors after the warm-up phase. Finally, the sensors are now showing good values at idle. Take a look how low the rear NOx is compared to the front NOx. The F11 used in this tutorial was a job that came from a main dealer who had replaced the metering valve, thinking that it was faulty. Since making this tutorial video, the car has driven several thousand kilometers totally fault-free. A reminder of how important it is to understand how things work right down to the most basic details. It is always well worth taking the car for a long road test, if at all possible, to ensure that there are no more problems with the AdBlue system. That is the end of this tutorial. If this has helped you and you want to support Ben's channel and the many hours of work he puts into creating this type of material, please subscribe for more upcoming training content. Just a final note regarding the fault code detection logic on newer BMW models, such as the G20. For example, fault codes now report sensor plausibility faults and not AdBlue quality faults, since many newer cars utilize an AdBlue quality sensor, so in a sense, newer models are that bit easier to diagnose. We hope that you enjoyed the tutorial. Thanks for stopping by.